Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello people, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Today we have a video of the top 15 upcoming games of 2022 and 2023 that you should look into. Remember this is only my personal list and that there are more upcoming games that may be worth a try apart from these ones. But for now, hope you enjoy this video. Hogwarts Legacy is a game set in the late 1800s of the well-known Harry Potter universe and follows a student starting at Hogwarts in their fifth year. The player is capable of manipulating a mysterious ancient magic and will need help uncover why this forgotten magic has suddenly made a resurgence. In terms of gameplay, Hogwarts Legacy is an open-world single-player RPG that will bring several soft spots for the fans of the series. The gameplay so far feels like everything people have been asking for all these years, with good graphics, a very well-made combat system full of different combos and spells, and the ability to make use of potions fitting your needs. And let's not forget, you can fly. Hogwarts Legacy is being made by Avalanche Software and is set to be released in late 2022. Let's wait. Fast. Lies of P is a Souls-like game where our main character is Pinocchio. Featuring gorgeous graphics, a very interesting gameplay mechanics from what we've seen so far of course, and an astonishing atmosphere that makes us feel that unique darker twist that the game wants to give us about Pinocchio's story. The game features the lie system where what you do and what you say as the main character dynamically affects the gameplay, which is basically a different implementation of what we have in most games nowadays. If you ask me, Lies of P has everything to be a hit, from graphics, character design and even gameplay, not even counting its unique twist of Pinocchio's story never seen before. Lies of P will most likely be released in early 2023 and if you're like me, well, it's gonna be a hard waiting. If you're into horror shooting games, you definitely want to lay an eye on this. Scorn is a first-person biopunk survival horror adventure game, damn that was long, being developed by the Serbian developer EBB Software. The player controls a skinless humanoid lost in an alien planet filled with odd creatures and living techno-organic structures. The game features insane graphic details and, in my opinion, is one of the boldest and most awesome game designs in years. It definitely gives me a prey feeling with weapons being modular and, in some cases, alive. I love games with good atmosphere and different gameplay mechanics and Scorn is definitely one of those games I'm looking into. Scorn is supposed to be released in October this year and I am pretty sure it will be a good surprise. God of War Ragnarok is the awaited sequel to the God of War 2018 that was firstly released for the PS4 and now available for PC since the beginning of 2022. God of War Ragnarok takes place three years after the events of the previous game and a now teenaged Atreus, curious and confused by the revelations of the previous game, seeks the answers to questions about his newfound identity as well as a way to prevent Ragnarok from happening. The game has a good uplift in terms of graphics fidelity, even comparing to the PC version of its predecessor, with new gameplay aspects focused on Atreus, but without forgetting about Kratos. God of War Ragnarok had an initial release date for 2021, but due to the pandemic, it was postponed to 2022. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is the sequel to Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, a game that was highly rated in several aspects and one of my favorite games inside the genre. We don't know much so far apart from the gameplay reveal we had some months ago, but let me tell you, it looks amazing. The things I liked the most about its predecessor were the atmosphere, 
graphics and audio design. And from what we've seen so far, Hellblade 2 is better in every single aspect. And that's no surprise since even one of the developers said that he thought Hellblade 2 would make Hellblade 1 seem like an indie game. We still don't have an agenda for the game, but it is supposed to be released in the end of 2022 or early 2023. If you're a DC fan and you love the Batman games so far, then you don't want to miss this one. Gotham Knights is an open world game set in Gotham City after the death of Bruce Wayne and James Gordon, which results in an almost lawless city. You can play with four characters, Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin and Red Hood. As expected, each character has unique abilities and while the game can be played solo, it also features a co-op multiplayer mode where the second player can drop in and out without affecting the other one. Basically, you can call your friends for help doing a mission you can't do alone and that's really awesome if you ask me. In terms of gameplay mechanics and graphics, we can expect the same level of effort as in the older games, which makes the bar pretty high. Gotham Knights is set to be released in October 2022 and all we can do is wait to enjoy it. If you're a DC fan then you are a goddamn lucky You had Gotham Knights before and now you have Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. The game takes place some time after the events of Batman Arkham Knight, where Amanda Walker creates a task force known as Suicide Squad in order to stop an alien called Brainiac that invaded Earth and started brainwashing its inhabitants. The Suicide Squad is composed by the Arkham Asylum inmates Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot and King Shark, all playable characters. From what we have seen so far, the game brings awesome graphics and a fast-paced fun gameplay, unlike Marvel Avengers Boom, with the usual comic standout of the Suicide Squad. Did you get him? Really? Why don't you just mail me the bullet? Sadly, although the gameplay trailer set 2022, it seems that the game will only be released in early 2023. Evil West is one of the greatest vampire killing games I've seen in years. As the name suggests, we have western elements like the cowboy styled character, but with amazing and extremely fun gameplay mechanics. In Evil West, you're one of the last agents in a top-secret vampire hunting institute, being the final line in between humanity and its doom. You also have several types of weapons, like for example the usual guns, lightning-fueled gauntlets and even flamethrowers. This, added to the visual and explosive combat and the ability to craft your own playstyle, brings one of the most exciting games in the genre, with narrative-driven campaign and co-op modes as well. Evil West has the release date set to 2022, but no specific date whatsoever. Forspoken is an action role-playing game developed by Luminous Productions and published by Square Enix. According to the director Takeshi Aramaki, the gameplay will be focused on terrain traversal speed and fluidity. The game has been awaited due to its fluid mechanics in terms of movement and combat, and the graphics are also well worthy of a 2022 title. In terms of the story, our protagonist is Frey Holland, a young woman who's transported from New York City to the fantasy world of Athia and uses magical power to journey through it and survive in order to find her way home. Frey has access to a variety of magic spells and the player can unlock better skills, craft new items in between many other things. There will also be a horde system called Breakstorm in which waves of demonic creatures spawn and attack Frey. The game is set to be released in October 2022 and is said to be the first game to feature direct storage, which improves scenarios related to loading assets. Sons of the Forest is a horror survival game and a sequel to The Forest released in 2018. There's not much information about the game so far, but it is supposedly going to be a bit more story-driven, having cutscenes in between, something that was missing in the previous game. The base of the game will most likely be the same, where the player is the survivor of a plane crash and has to stay alive in the mysterious forest, alongside creepy cannibals and some horrifying creatures. 
In terms of survival mechanics, it is set to improve upon the previous one, as expected, with more realistic aspects in several departments. In terms of graphics, the forest was already on a good level, but Sons of the Forest takes it even further. It is going to be released in 2022 as well, and definitely a title worth the waiting. Following the line of the survival horror games, we have the remake of Dead Space, one of the best game series inside the genre. This is the remake of the 2008 game, now developed by Motive Studios and published by Electronic Arts. Please don't screw this, EA! The game retains the same plot as the original, being set in the 26th century, and being the main character, Isaac Clarke, a crewman on the repair vessel assigned to the massive planetary mining ship that has gone silent. The game is using EA's Frostbite engine and from what we've seen so far, it looks pretty damn good, even in early versions. And while the gameplay style seems to be the same, it will definitely be more refined while bringing that same 2008 feeling. As far as we know, that space remake is supposed to be released in 2023, but when exactly, we can't say. Ok, just one more survival horror game. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl is the fourth game inside the Stalker video game series and is being developed by the Ukrainian game developer GCS Game World. And don't worry, they moved out of Ukraine to actually finish the game. The game was initially announced several years ago, but due to the several issues, most likely financial ones, we are only going to see this masterpiece in the end of the year. I could say lots of things about this gameplay trailer, but as you can see it for yourself, this is without a doubt one of the best looking games that I've ever seen. Stalker 2 will also be one of the biggest open world games up to date, filled with a dangerous and ever-changing environment, radiation, mutants and even anomalies. A game that in my opinion is definitely worth the wait. Well, remember that thing about just one more survival horror game? Yeah, I was lying. Although it was a worthy lie, because we're talking about Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake is one of Remedy's entertainment game series, and gladly, I never saw a game from Remedy that wasn't at least good. Alan Wake 2 is a sequel to Alan Wake 2010, but this time, according to Sam Lake, we won't be having an action game with horror elements, but instead a survival horror game. And it was even stated that people won't need to play the previous games to understand this one, but I mean, having recently the remake of the first Alan Wake definitely makes things easier. We still don't have any gameplay footage yet, not even in the small 2021 Game Awards presentation, but damn, it's coming. Black Myth Wukong is an action role-playing game being developed by the indie company Game Science and has been jaw-dropping people since the gameplay reveal. The game's story is based on the classical 16th century Chinese novel Journey to the West, and the player controls a monkey referred as the Destined One and has to go through several enemies with amazing fighting abilities and out-of-the-box transformations like for example transforming into a flying insect or a giant monster. In terms of graphics, the game uses Unreal Engine 5 and is one of the most beautiful and detailed games that I've ever seen, with some well-known developers saying that if those details were actually being rendered in real time, then it would be incredible, which seems to be true after some analysis. So far, we have a 28 minutes 4K gameplay showing all of this game's glory, and as for the release date, as far as I know we haven't anything confirmed, but it is supposed to be released in 2023. The last game of this list is A Plague Tale Requiem, which is a sequel to the award-winning A Plague Tale Innocence. The previous game was one of the most surprising games I've played back then, and people actually had no expectations or didn't even know about the game. But I have to tell you, it surprised me. The story was nothing astonishing, but it was definitely solid. The graphics, atmosphere and sound design were also worthy of a AAA title, being the only limiting factor the gameplay. 
and even that was kind of okay taking it in consideration the focus of the game that was mainly a Mishi avoiding killing the enemies, at least directly, and Hugo using his powers. A Plague Tale Requiem seems to build upon those bases and improve them, like a Misha finally using weapons, for example like the knife and crossbow that we see in the trailer, and of course with improved gameplay of Hugo as well. We don't know much more about the game, but if it comes to be at least as good as its predecessor, then it will surely be a good game. An Avatar open world game may have been expected as much as a Hogwarts one, and this is why Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is happening. The game was firstly announced in 2017 and is set to be released this year. So far things look very promising and the way the gameplay will roll and the story will be told will define if the game is gonna be a success or not. But taking in consideration the experience Ubisoft has in open world games, like for example the Assassin's Creed ones, well, I think that game will deliver, at least to an enjoyment point. Well, that was all for today's video, hope you enjoyed it and the games shown. Before leaving, leave your comment in the comment section and as always, help the channel by leaving your like and if you can, subscribing. See you all in the next video.